Hey friendlies, it's Carolyn and welcome back to my adventurous RV life. <laughs> uh, where I've been camped for about the last five days or so, it has, I'm in like a wind tunnel. Uh, I'm kind of surrounded, yeah, I'm, I am. I'm surrounded by mountains on both sides and I, I'm in a wind tunnel. And so um, I have a confession to make. Yeah, I have to come clean. I'm scared to death of the wind living in my RV. <laughs> I hate it. I have been through some crazy windstorms from losing my awning in Weed, California last uh, November or October, that it, it, last October, to just being out here the last few days, just some crazy, rocking, gusty, scary winds. And, uh, and I'll be honest, it freaks you me out a little bit. Uh, I'm not afraid of a lot of things, but sitting in my RV in the middle of the desert all by myself, miles from anyone with raging whipping wind outside. <laughs> One of my solar panels just fell with raging gusty winds outside in a 23 year old RV who hasn't exe that hasn't actually um, proven <laughs> to be the most reliable, durable thing in the world freaks me out a little bit. So I've been keeping an eye on the weather just to see what's coming up. And yesterday I saw that today we're gonna be getting, I think it's set up to 35 mile an hour winds, maybe 45 with 55 mile per hour gusts by four o'clock. It's noon. It said between noon and four, it was gonna peak at four o'clock. Half hour ago, there was no wind and it's already starting. So I went online yesterday to Facebook and I asked a lot of you who've been through this before, what can I do? Am I gonna survive? Am I gonna be okay? And everybody reassured me that they've been through worse in smaller, in different rigs and everybody has survived. But I did get some really helpful tips that I'm gonna share with you. So. Stay with me. Uh, I think we're going to hang out tonight. I'm going to show you what a 55 mile an hour wind gust storm in a 29 foot RV looks like alone in the desert. So we'll shoot that. And in the meantime, I'm going to show you uh, some of the tips that I learned, not only from the people uh, who responded to me, but I did a little research online as well and found some RV forums, uh, some things that I can do to make sure uh, my rig stays safe. Oh, my tripod's about ready to blow over. Okay, so let's go. Let's get ready for this big storm that's coming. Okay, tip number one. I'm not driving, so that's a good thing. I don't have to drive today. I'm stationary. If I was driving, um, or if I you know, knew I was going to be on the road today, I wouldn't actually. <laughs> I wouldn't want to drive in that. Number one, I hate driving in the wind because it just really kills my gas mileage unless it's a tailwind. So um, I'm not driving today. So uh, you know, tip number one for surviving wind in an RV, don't drive if you don't have to. Tip number two, and I don't know, you. there's nothing here you can really tell other than looking at me. This is how I can tell the direction of the wind. It's coming from my back. And as you can see, Matilda isn't, you know, this isn't bad. At least I'm not perpendicular to the wind. And I did read it's going to be a southwesterly wind. And that's the direction it is coming from right now. But I'm going to show you so what that huge southwesterly wind at gusts of um, 55 mile, miles an hour is going to hit is the back end, this big giant square back end. And the back end is the lightest part of my rig. So if it comes up from underneath, which it has been feeling like it's been doing in the last couple of days, and there's Capone in his spot. Hi, Capone. Um, if it comes up from underneath, it's going to rock it even more. So what some of you suggested, pointing, yeah, pointing my rig in the direction of the wind. So I'm going to turn around and put the nose into the wind. Woo! It's starting. Holy cow. So I'm going to put the nose. See, the nose is a little bit more aerodynamic. I have the curves in the hood and I have the curve uh, above on the camper. So right now I'm going to go ahead and do that because it really is picking up. So I'm going to go ahead before it gets too bad and I'm going to um, point my nose in the direction of the wind. Let's see if we can do this without losing the tripod. Oh, I actually have a, an anchor.
how I did. I'm a little, I think I'm pointed a little bit too much to the west, so I'm going to back up and um, try it again. I need to go a little more south. Hi, puppy. He's keeping my seat warm. I know the, your seat is all full of stuff. Let's see what we can do. Let's see one thing if we can level out. That would be nice. Sideways, so I'm just gonna level her out. I'm gonna bring everything in. I'm gonna walk around my rig. I'm gonna make sure all my latches are closed tight because the other day I did leave one open and stuff went really, I don't know how it happened, but stuff blew out and went all over the place. So I was chasing litter <laughs> around the desert um, as much as I could. My exhaust doesn't have a leak, by the way. Yeah, it's quite nice and peaceful back here, actually. All right, later it's gonna get a rocket and a roll. Uh, I have some footage, actually, from the other day, too. Okay, so yeah, I've got an open one here, and I've got all kinds of stuff in there that could blow away. Uh, all right, so I'm just gonna go around my rig. I'm gonna make sure all my windows are closed, because uh, things are gonna get really gusty here in a minute. All right, stay tuned, we'll see you in a bit. All right, it's another lovely windstorm. Living in an RV in the desert. I guess this is a desert, high desert. Listen. So that's, oh, so it dies down. So that's what I need to do just get the camera out and it'll die down. Look at how much this is shaking. It is just whipping like crazy. <laughs> I feel like I'm in some kind of a circus or um, what do they call that? Um, a fair ride? I'm trying to see if we can get a gust, a good gust. The weather says it's 14 mile an hour winds, but there's no way. There is no way. It feels way worse than that. <laughs> it's like a haunted house. Carolyn's haunted house RV living. You see that? Oh, yeah. Oh, look at you can see it way. Oh, wow. Look at it way out there. I don't know if you'll be able to see. Look at the wind, the dirt, the sand. There's no wind. Where do you think we can go where there's no wind? What do you think?
can't see, but it's howling pretty good out there. Can you hear it? <laughs> We're not shaking bad at all today compared to what it was the other day. It's too dark, can't see anything. Okay. So the storm is over and I have to tell you, it wasn't nearly as bad as that storm I had the other night. Uh, I have no idea what the winds were the, uh, the other night. Actually, I looked online and it said the winds were gonna be up to 14 miles per hour. I don't know what they said the gusts were gonna be. And then last night, the gusts were supposed to be up to 55 miles an hour. And boy, what a difference po um, poking, poking the, um, uh, putting the rig nose in the direction of the wind. I thought I would take you with me and show you what it felt like to rock and roll all night in a huge windstorm, but it, it was not bad at all. Oh, what a difference. I can't believe I didn't think of it before uh, in, in just, you know, I mean, sometimes it's not always the most convenient thing in the world to move my rig. Sometimes I don't have the space. I can't, it's not easy to turn around or whatever. Uh, but now it's it's but now I know point my nose in the direction that the wind is coming uh, Wonderground weather it has really great hour by hour information about wind and precipitation the direction of the wind is coming there they've been very accurate I've been keeping my eye on them since I've been here and they've been very very accurate so Wonderground is it Wonderground I think dot com I'll put it in a caption uh, but yeah, if you, you know, if you think about it, what I was doing is either par parking perpendicular to the wind. So that huge 29 feet of my, of my RV was getting slammed by the wind and rocking and rolling it, or even, oh man, look at, the... <laughs> okay, before we go on, I have to show you this. Whoa, look at this sky. Jeez, I gotta tell you, it's gonna be hard to leave here. And if I wasn't running out of food, <laughs> I wouldn't, but I'm down to, I think I told, well, I don't know when you'll see this, but uh, I'm down to a head of cabbage <laughs> for my veggies. So uh, I, unfortunately, and I'm 45 minutes from the nearest store, uh, so I might as well just move on. Oh gosh, it's beautiful here though. Even with the wind, I love it. Cover up my license plate. All right. Uh, so as I was saying, um, as I was saying, if you think about it, what I, well, what I didn't think about before was that even if my my rig was was par parallel to, or in the going in the same direction as the wind, but my back was to it. The back is the lightest part of my RV. So if the wind is coming up from under, I don't know how to describe the image of it flipping actually, right? Um, the, the back end just kind of flipping up on itself. Of course, that's not going to happen. It's what it's, I don't know. I don't know how many pounds it is. I can't remember six and a half ton I think so it's about 13 pounds so that's not going to happen but the lightest part of the RV was getting the gusts of wind coming up underneath it and really really rocking it look at that sky oh man I love it here oh it's beautiful it's going to rain again tomorrow all right whereas the front of the rig let's go check out the front again Oh crap. <laughs> and I took my license plate blocker. Well, there's something over there that he's very interested in. So whereas the front of the whereas the front of the RV, in addition to uh, you know being more aerodynamic, it's got the weight of the engine, which is really the heaviest part of the whole RV probably. Uh, so in addition to being aerodynamic, it, even if the wind gust does come up from underneath it, it's not going to rock it as easily um, as it would in the back. So yeah, I was pretty steady all night. It was the best windstorm I have ever been through, and I'm also getting used to it. I actually am getting less scared. Uh, 
but it it really was such a different experience just pointing my nose in the direction that the wind was coming from so it's an excellent tip thank you everybody who who shared that with me and i hope it helps a lot of you um of course i'm in a class c uh being in a trailer or uh, might be a little bit different although i think those those have an aerodynamic nose so you may just want to make sure that nose if you can is facing in the direction of course if you got a crazy windstorm that's swirling around coming from a million different directions uh you know it, it's not going to be quite as effective as it was for me luckily the wind pretty much stayed in one direction during this storm one other thing let me show you i i did leave my solar panels out and they were fine so look i also look what i did they really are a little bit of a pain to drag in and out that's another thing uh oh i'm gonna color cover that in another video never mind so they really are a little bit of a pain to drag in and out so if i can leave them out i would rather and what i did is i stacked them so i faced uh the bottom here um you know this this end here i faced that down in the direction of the wind so that the wind would kind of swoop up over it i put the second panel underneath it and then i propped it down with a rock just to make sure and they stayed solid they didn't move at all so um i'm i'm feeling pretty good about my little windy experience here oh my gosh look man look can you see that? Okay, I need to go get my camera, my still. Look at that. <laughs> okay, there you have it. That's how you survive a windstorm living in an RV or a motorhome. I hope that helped you feel a little bit more comfortable in your next giant windstorm living in your or traveling in your RV or motorhome. And until next time, be safe, be happy, be free, and be kind. You're awesome. Thank you. Bye.